everybody, it's Mrs. Casill, and I was looking at problem number 27 here, and I thought that this was a really good problem, but it also includes a little bit of physics magic. One of my least favorite things that does happen is textbooks, like I think it's up on the board behind me, um, will come up with shortcut equations. And this is when there's a useful tool for solving this kind of problem, for example, that is actually about just doing a whole bunch of extra math. In this case, we've got an elastic collision. So kinetic energy is conserved and momentum is conserved. By taking those two equations for the conservation of kinetic energy and the conservation of momentum for two different objects, car A and car B, and doing some math, you can end up with a useful equation that then can get used. This is never provided on an equation sheet because it's only useful in these very small circumstances. And theoretically, you can derive it yourself by doing a whole bunch of math. So um, I'm going to go ahead and use it here. If you want to know how it is derived, I guess let me know and I'll do the derivation for you. But basically, by taking conservation of momentum and conservation of kinetic energy, we figure out this equation. Let me click the right button. That the difference between the initial velocities, oh, it helps, I already made a mistake writing, that's supposed to be a minus sign. The difference between the initial velocities of two objects is equal to negative the difference between their final velocities. And that comes from the conservation of momentum and the conservation of kinetic energy. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna use this equation along with this story problem um, to figure out how fast these two bumper cars are going after the collision. So, um, two bumper cars in an amusement park ride collide elastically as one approaches the other directly from the rear. Car A has a mass of 450 kilograms, I'm writing that down, and car B has a mass of 550 kilograms. If a car, if car A approaches, so that initial velocity for car A, if car A approaches at 4.5 meters per second and car B is moving at 3.7 meters per second, and they're going in the same direction according to my diagram there, I want to figure out what the um, their velocities are after the collision and the change in momentum for each. So I'm just going to do the velocities part because once you have that, you can figure out the um, change in momentum just by using conservation of momentum. Um, all right, so here we go. Well, not, yeah, anyway. So let me flip over to my top right camera. So what I've got here is this, uh, Big ugly equation, and we're going to do some algebra first. So first, let's find out what this difference between the velocities is right here, right? Um, and really, I, I want to solve for, um, yeah, okay. So I know what my initial velocity A is. That's 4.5 meters per second minus my Initial velocity for B, 3.7 meters per second. So that's 0 0.8 meters per second is that difference between them. So I can do a little bit of algebra here. And uh, with the solution guide, if you look up that to go along with you, they solve for final velocity B first, mostly just so that they can solve for final velocity a first. It sounds like a contradiction in terms, but you'll see what I'm talking about. All right, so 0 0.8 meters per second is equal to negative times these, this difference. So I'm going to solve, like I said, let me get another color for a second, for velocity b here so that I can substitute that into my equation here. So um, I've got a negative sign. I'm just going to flip that over to the other side. Um, negative 0 0.8 meters per second. I like doing all my algebra so that way I don't make mistakes. So I'm going to flip that over. 
So now I've got a bunch of negative signs everywhere, right? Negative b b final equals um, negative 0 0.8 meters per second minus v a f. So I'm going to cancel all those. Okay. So the final velocity of car b is going to be equal to whatever final velocity of car A is plus that 0.8 meters per second difference. Okay, So this doesn't mean anything by itself, but it is a value I can now substitute in my momentum equation as I try to solve for each of these cars. Right, So momentum is conserved in all collisions, so that means that mass of car A times the velocity of car A initial plus the mass of car B times the velocity of car initial. That's my momentum beforehand, right? That's what this is. I'm writing out that has to be equal to the two momenta afterwards. So the momentum of car B, or car A, excuse me, the mass of car A times the velocity of car A final times the mass of car B, times the velocity of car B, just in case you think you don't ever make mistakes with your words. Right? Um, I can find these two numbers. Uh, I'm going to do all the algebra first because then, you know, I might get lucky something like cancel, um, or I just have one run at my calculator, which means I'm less likely to make a mistake. So I'm going to substitute this in right here for velocity b final. Um, so I'm going to end up with a, a big long equation. Um, and if I really cared, this is where I would speed up my video. If I thought I could do math at the same time and uh, not make mistakes, I would tell you more interesting stories about uh, animals that I know about. All right, so this is why this was helpful to us. I mean, just to sort of highlight things. I know all these numbers. These are all numbers I was given. And now, I have only one unknown. Granted, it's in two places, so I have a little bit of algebra to do to solve for it, but that's what I'm going to go ahead and do now. Okay. So, It's just a lot of letters. So I'm going to combine my two terms that have a final velocity of A in them. Okay. And then I'm going to do some rearranging. I'm just checking my answer guide to make sure I don't make any other mistakes here. So I want to solve for that VAF. So let's run vectors. Minus 0 0.8 times the mass of velocity B. And that's all going to be divided by mass A plus mass B. And that should be equal to velocity A. When I chunk these things together in my brain, like the M and the A, the M and the V always stay together, it really helps. So, um, okay, yeah, yeah, I think I think I haven't made any hardly 
tragic errors there. Uh, let's plug in some numbers. So, uh, mass A, 450 kilograms, times ma uh, velocity initial A, 4.5 meters per second, plus, I guess I can combine those terms, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, mass B, 550 kilograms, times velocity initial B, which is 3.7 meters per second, minus 0 0.8 meters per second times uh, mass B 550 and that's all going to be divided by the sum of these two masses 450 kilograms plus 550 kilograms so with my trusty radio shack calculator I'm going to do this in parts <laughs> alright I've got 2,025 kilogram meters Per second momentum plus 2035 kilogram meters per second minus 440 kilogram meters per second divided by 1000 kilograms. So that I can do in my calculator pretty easy. 2025 plus 2035 minus 440 equals 3620 divided by 1000 equals 3.62. And if you've forgotten what we're solving for here, meters per second, that's our final velocity of car A. Right? So the final velocity of car A is 3.62 meters per second. Now, like all good systems of equations can do, this equation I used to substitute, I can go put this final velocity A back. I guess it's underneath my face. Sorry about that. Final velocity for car A, I'm going to plug in right here. It's going to be the 3.62 plus 0.8 meters per second, which is 4.42. So car B, its final velocity is 4.42 meters per second. So We have two numbers there, kind of on opposite sides of my page. So I had a lot of really ugly math to do. Um, this is a case, I always tell you do your algebra first, but this is one of those times that it might have been easier to render your momentum with the numbers that you already knew to turn all these MVAIs and MVBIs into just a single sum because those two numbers stayed together throughout this entire process, right? So that would have simplified the look on our page a little bit, not actually what math we were doing, but that would be one thing we do. So all this came from using this secret little equation here to solve, what number is this? This is number 27 in chapter seven in the Giancoli sixth edition. So that's how you do part A. The rest of that problem you can do problem now that you have the velocities.